just five minutes a day in this thing, and so far I've added three millimeters. Look, it's it's just a suction thing. See, turn it on like that. To the girth of your cum shot? That's incredible. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. <sighs> All right. Do you, uh, you want to go first? Uh, I thought that, you know, were you not comfortable? I don't want to do that intro. You don't want to do that intro? No. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, it wasn't funny. Um, hold on. We can, uh, um. Maybe Luke could do the intro? Oh, yeah. We, we, we. We do, we don't give him a lot of responsibilities. I know, and I mean, he's been talking will, about be a test. Mm-hmm. I guess. And he wants to. Uh, he's like, I really want more, you know, spotlight time. I want. I want to be a star. Okay. And he's obsessed with becoming a star so lately. Fucking, yeah. Why not, Luke? Go ahead and uh, yeah. go ahead and in, uh, intro the podcast. Intro us in. Bring it in. Hey guys, welcome to the Super Mega Show. Uh, unfortunately, we have run out of funny hat budget, so my head is barren today. Uh, Ryan spent our funny hat budget on another fancy family vacation, this time a cruise to the Bahamas, where he's taking his mother, his father, and both of his grandparents on a luxury cruise. Enjoy. Uh, no, Matt, I'm not going to leave. Walk off. I, I'm not going to walk off, Matt. Beautifully said, Luke. You know? Well, thank you for uh, for a great introduction. It's a um, yeah. I mean, that's all I have to say about it. Mm-hmm. Who's this Luke guy? Well, uh, Luke is a longtime family friend. Um, we're related by like what is it? I think second cousin, twice removed, or some shit. I I don't know how that stuff works, but uh, we the three of us do share genetics. We found out through our twenty three and Me DNA tests that Ryan and I have one common relative, and it's Luke. So uh, we hired him, and he edits the podcast. So All right, I thought that was pretty cool. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Super Mega Show. That's right. The the podcast uh, uh, by white people for white people. Well, it's for everyone. Yeah, but I'm just making sure that like white people are safe here. You know, <laughs> I just you know the, the podcast not, is for everyone, but I just want white people to know if you're they, safe here. Yeah, they, <laughs> I just want to make sure that them of all them of all people because they. They're the most marginalized in this day and age with, you know, Kamala Harris going after <sighs> the the whites and such. Ugh. I'll tell you something, man. Thanksgiving conversations be like. Dude, I can't wait for those. <laughs> I have family members that uh, that I, I feel like I've met only a couple times in my life. And my dad has a lot of sisters. Um, and I don't really know them. Um, but I, I honestly don't think I'm going to be seen people on the Watson side of the family probably just, ever again uh I think I think you miss her I think, at, at least from my conversation sister wives okay got you got you okay. that might be a little bit of the confusion there for you because you're thinking of just the typical you know the yeah yeah I was I was thinking about like blood sisters which you you can be a sister wife and he is <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it, it is. We need to move super mega to Utah. You know, it's like California's fucking expensive. Uh, you know, this city is full of snakes and scumbags and Jack Doherty's. So it would be awesome. To well, move. he was in Miami when that happened. When he crashed his McLaren mm-hmm. in the rain, looking at his phone. Bro, hold, hold my camera. <laughs> ah! What a fucking little bitch. Uh, but we should move to Salt Lake City. And, uh, or like Provo or something. Salt Lake City. For That's the Book of Mormon? Gotcha. I thought you were singing their national anthem. No. I don't, I don't know if uh, Salt Lake has a national anthem. I'm sure they've got a song or two. Probably, you know, like a show tune. <laughs> to naturally be recognized. <laughs> I love Salt Lake City, though. Um, I went once when I was uh, touring in 2022 mm, I'm more of a fan of Pepper City Gotcha Okay That's good That's good Put it there Ow fucking <laughs> shit dude That hurt I, I heard the knock Yeah that uh Knock I, I wonder if people could Could have Heard that If they're audio listeners And also I do want to Acknowledge The second knock That you threw in Setting up A knock knock joke That was good um, so who's there? I don't, I don't put me on the spot. No, that's all you had? Huh? 
Okay. Just don't put me on the spot. Okay. And I'll, I, hadn't, I, I, I hadn't come up with it yet. Sure. Um, don't do that, dude. Don't make this awkward and turn it around on me. You're the one wearing the Billie Eilish sunglasses. She gave them to me. And you know how I feel about she celebrity gifts. She gave them gifts. to you because she thought she looked stupid in them. No, she, she went, I'm going to give these to my friend Matt. It's like it's like when the good witch gives the 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 other witch uh, a, a stereotypical witch hat. And it's like, wear this. It, it looks so cool. But she doesn't mean it looks cool. It looks stupid. And she's going to look embarrassed in front of all of her witch friends in this stupid goofy witch hat sorry i saw the trailer for 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 wicked and i saw that scene and i i just got so peeved off because that's not what friends do friends don't give you a witch hat and go you look great and then make you have you go to a party thinking you look like the business in a witch hat well now i'm starting to think the same thing if billy is really my friend yeah where did you hear that she said that these looked stupid no, I, well, I was just watching the trailer for the Wicked uh, movie, the Wicked musical. No, no, I, I, I hear I, that. I, I, just, I think the neurons just mentally connected. It's like, I don't know, I got the same vibe. So you didn't hear her say that she thought these looked stupid? Not in her words. What are you talking about? Her assistant. I don't care about Brad. Okay, well. Brad's a little bitch. <sighs> Do they look stupid? It? Huh? Do they look stupid? Uh, Brad's words, not mine. Okay, what are your words? Uh... Hold on, I need a drink of this energy drink real quick. Sure. Mm. Do you think these glasses look stupid on me? No, they're very attention grabbing. Okay, I'll take them off then. <laughs> the real reason I'm wearing them is because I haven't been sleeping well and my under eye circles are incessantly dark today. Yeah. And I was self conscious. So I, I put saw something. you dolloping all that makeup on in the bathroom. <laughs> well, I don't know how to put makeup on, and I, I guess lipstick is only for your lips, so now I look I, like an idiot. I wish whatever you said you were, like, going to put, like, some stuff on, you'd always come back with, like, the quintessential doll makeup, with, like, the <laughs> blush and the tiny red the lips. The eyeliner. Like, you know, like, the heart lips yes, that are where like, really tiny. They do, the, they do the dark red just as, like, a small part of their lips. <laughs> yeah. Dude, well, I only put on some concealer. What are you talking about? <laughs> Try don't, to pass it don't off. I look good? You would look good. You'd look like the queen of hearts. The queen okay. of my heart. Well, I'll take these off then. And I just, I don't want people to be shocked by how dark my, you know, I look, I look ghastly. I look. Okay, Luke, when he takes the glasses off, you got to add one of those classic, like, um, horror movie high pitched girl screams. You know what, you know what I'm talking about? All right. Here, do it. So the audience can, uh, can know. Okay. Take your glasses off. <laughs> yes. That one, that one. Oh, right. That was good. Well, now I'm, uh, yeah, I'll just feel self-conscious for the rest of the podcast, but it's fine. Why not just feel self? No, that's a problem that most people have is they just, they can't feel self. And, uh, or you can get in trouble with it like Pee Wee did in a, in a movie theater. Well, I'm talking about a different type of feeling self, but oh. what Pee Wee did, uh, yeah, that's one way of feeling yourself. Um, and I also don't think he should have been arrested for that. Then maybe more in like the Louis C.K., uh, um, sense? No, mm, not really in the Louis C.K. sense either. I guess more like the uh, the Coney 2012 guy. Oh. You remember that? Didn't he just have like a mental breakdown and strip naked and run around? Uh, yeah, he, he ended up just like in the streets naked jacking off. Okay. So. I forgot the jacking off portion. Yeah. Uh, or that, that's, that's what I was told by the police officers that arrested him. Um, what that, that was, that was a moment in history, Coney 2012. Yeah. It was a very, uh, particular point in time. Do you remember, uh, what, what, wasn't it like on this one specific date overnight, go out and put, print these Coney 2012 things out and put them everywhere. Wasn't there like some, I know, I don't know if it was not like a Netflix documentary, but wasn't there like a big documentary that popularized it too? Well, he, like, he made thought, a documentary okay, that was okay, put on that's YouTube. What, okay. It was just on YouTube, I think, because I remember watching it and being See, like... I forgot most of like the history around it. Really, when you when I hear Coney 2012, I think of a naked man in, yep. in like a fetal position or like in a, like in a, I guess in a, in like a, some sort of crouched styled uh, stance. Well, now you can think of it as a naked man jacking off. Um, and also... Yeah, it it, it kind of stole the spotlight from Joseph Coney. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, 
didn't really do him any favors. Is he still, like, just on his bullshit, Joseph Coney? <laughs> He'd just be coneying around, bro. Dude, he just be coning the F around, you know what I'm saying? Fuck yeah. Yeah. Nice. His children soldiers, that's what he, that's what he does, I think. Or that guy was just trying to slander him. Like Spy Kids? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, kind of, yeah, Joseph Coney is kind of like a uh, floop. He was just doing like OSS type, you know? Mm-hmm. He's kind of like a uh, floop and uh, fl- floop, fl- what was his name? Huh? Who was floop? Like, what was floop's name in Spy Kids? The full thing. I don't know, but he made fluglies. Yeah, so. But I'm not talking about the fluglies. I'm You're talking, talking about, about the Spy Kid clones. Yeah, the. The I robots. The, yeah, okay, they were robots, right? Yeah. Because they, they, like, punch one and go, ah! And they could fly. Motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I, man. I was like, whoa! Whoa! It caught me off guard a little bit. Made it fun in the theater. I was a kid. I wasn't expecting that. I know. Um, but I, I, we should have Joseph Coney on the podcast if we get a chance. Yeah. Just kind of yeah. ask him, like, what have you been up to, man? Like, and, what's uh, new? We're about to take an ad break, but before we head out... What? I, um... <sighs> Such a damn shame what they did to the Joker and Joker 2. Yeah, it was disgusting. That's all I'll say about that. Enjoy the ads. This is beautiful, isn't it? Welcome back from uh, the ad breaks. Put that away. Uh, put the kind of uh, we have an exciting rest of the show planned for you. Yeah, we do. Matt, tell them what they have in store. Uh, so coming up next, some hilarious improv conversation between myself and my best friend Ryan McGee. Uh, we're going to be jumping from topic to topic, not finishing our points, and uh, speaking on subjects we don't really know a lot about uh, with confidence. And then at some point, we'll go to another ad break. Uh, as we are contractually obligated. And then after that, in the third and final act, uh, let's just say there might be a little uh, slam poetry. Hmm? Uh? <laughs> See, guys, that's what we're talking about. That's the improvisational, uh, you know, dialogue. Yeah. It's great stuff. What was that? What? You, just, you picked a piece of paper up and threw it on I the floor. It's from the Q&A, except nothing's written it's on blank? it. It's blank? Yeah, it's just blank. I think one, you know, got thrown in there. That was gotcha. The classic blank paper prank. You. I, I put it in your you chair fucking before. <laughs> Luke, censor that for the YouTube version because you can't, we'll get demonetized for that one. What's wrong with you? Why would you say that? And apparently we'll get demonetized as well if I say some other words that you have to bleep out. Fuck. What? <laughs> We didn't give a, you know, we're already like 15 minutes into the podcast. We haven't given a, uh, this week's Talk Tua update. Oh, shit. Yeah, so. Uh, is there an update? Well, you said every episode we were oh, going to. Oh, shit, yeah, yeah, let me go. Let me Play go. the jingle, Luke. Let's go check the charts, baby. Talk to a update. <laughs> Talk to a update. I'm curious what Luke will Talk do Talk to a update. Talk to a update. What are you singing? The the Talk to a Podcast Update song. I'm just trying Oh, to... okay. I couldn't tell what you were saying. I thought you were saying Update. I should go to Top Podcast, right? Or Top Comedy. Top Podcast. Top Podcast. On Spotify. What's no. the top of the charts? <clears throat> Number one, Sean Ryan Show. Who? I still don't know who that is. Who the hell is that? Let me... Um, is he a goofball? Culture, personal stories, philosophy. No, oh, he's a philosophizer. Uh, the Sean Ryan Show is hosted by Sean Ryan. Go figure. Okay. A uh, former U.S. Navy SEAL, CIA contractor, and founder of Vigilance Elite. We tell real stories about real people from all walks of life. We discuss the ups and downs, wins and losses, successes and struggles, the good and the bad, in a respectful but candid way with our guest. Uh, we're better than entertainment. We're the real thing. Please enjoy the show. That sounds... Lame. Well, the uh, their latest episode is titled "Detecting Remnants of Alien Technology." Never mind; it doesn't sound lame at all. But anyway, so number one. But see, C- he's CIA. Yeah, former maybe. Uh, so yeah. he would know a thing or two. Number two, Joe Rogan. Okay, nice. Number three, Candace Owens. Damn it! 
Uh, number four, the Tucker Carlson show. What? Um, where's you Ta- won't believe it, but where's Talk Two? Talk Two is all the way down at eleven. What? Under distractibles. Lord Minion Seven Seven Seven's podcast is higher on the charts than Talk Tua. Is that what you're telling me right now? You're not lying to me. I do think it's funny because distractible is like Mark, Bob, and Wade, right? It's Lord Minion 777. <laughs> well. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the profile picture. What? Just like Mark's old Let's that, Play Wharf stash. That is picture. not what the, the picture <laughs> was on Spotify. Last time I saw it, they had this like custom art made where it was like Mark in the center with, with uh, Bob and Wade on each side. And it looked pretty cool. Now it's just Mark's old like Wharf stash profile picture. It is where's, recognizable. Where's the distract? Did the podcast end? Wait. It's not on there anymore? What do you mean? No, it is. It is. It, sorry. It's just that when I clicked on it, it took me to like the artist profile page instead of the profile page of the podcast itself. So the pot, th- their podcast is still the movie poster looking thing. Okay. It's just when you look at the charts, it's a picture of Mark's old Let's Play profile picture. That profile picture. Is will- it still his? I don't think he's ever changed profile it. picture. Because I remember when we were working for Mark... Uh, I think at one point we mentioned something. We were like, hey, have you ever thought about like getting a new banner or changing the profile picture? Oh, no, it's the same one. Damn. Yeah, well, I remember he said, he was like, he was like, no, it's solid branding, and I'm keeping the branding solid across all platforms. So he kept it, and it is solid branding, you know? The Mark Tua podcast. How about Ooh. that? But it looks like Talk Tua is not as popular <sighs> as she was three weeks ago how the mighty have fallen oh yeah and this is coming out way after i even looked at it she may be down even further in fact in the comment section below what number is talk to her right now in the in the podcast charts in the spotify in spotify this the, you know the charts on the spotify stuff genius for engagement good job yeah guys comment which what, what the number what the number is and if you're watching this in one year comment what it is too and comment and comment one thing you appreciate about your religion no <laughs> just people that don't bring religion into this <laughs> they're the ones bringing it into it i'm just saying talk freely amongst yourselves about religion that's true and then one other and then name your least favorite thing about another religion yep. that's exactly what i was gonna say <laughs> the favorite thing about your religion and then your least favorite thing about another another religion. another religion that you don't buy into yeah and, and let's uh, just you know health healthy conversations open and honest you know freedom of speech open conversation you know that's what the that's what the youtube comments are about it's about opening a dialogue you know jesus be like freedom to preach <laughs> yeah he did and then he went into a marketplace and went oh and started flipping tables and shit what a little what a little hissy fit he threw when he was younger can't hold that against him no, that's when he got lost when he was younger, sorry. Yeah, no, this is when Jesus was a grown man, and he goes into, I guess, into a church, and they were selling things at tables, going, oh, And he flipped beads. the tables? Yeah, and he started going, start flipping tables and getting pissed off. He did, though. Is that historically recorded? Because you know how there's, like, you know, most historians agree that Jesus did exist, um, but I wonder if, like, if that actually happened. If the him flipping tables, if that was just like a, a story written for the Bible, or if there's historical documentation of Christ of Nazareth, just just getting a toot, copping a toot, and just going up into that uh, that market and just flipping tables. Well, I've always known Jesus to be a very nice man who 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 uh, copies and pastes fish and bread for the masses. So. People get sometimes upset whenever we uh, make Christianity in particular the punchline of a joke. We don't. <laughs> well, whenever we do, as I'm having this conversation, um, people get really upset. And they're like, it's such an easy punch about Why are you guys so mean about it? It's like, I don't know. I hope, I hope no one takes great offense into the, the comedy. Like, it, we're just we just have a very big Christian background, right? We just know a lot about it, so it's like it's kind of like what we know, you know. And we've been we've been doing this since day one, you know. We're not hopping on the Jesus is cool trend, uh, like you see a lot of those other freak tubers doing. Yeah, uh, you and I, 
the we, dude, we are we are some of the OGs on YouTube we when it comes to mocking Jesus Christianity. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know. We just grew up, a, like you said, very religious Southern Christian background. So it's fun. Uh, it was a big part of our lives for a large part of it. Yeah. So especially when we're maturing and growing up, because we both attended church and youth group stuff up through high school and then stopped around college. Yeah, I mean, I was going multiple times a week. Mm -hmm. I, I would go youth group on Sunday, and, and then, then Wednesday night, I would go Because there was another special youth group that, like, mine was, like, The Rock. We met at The Rock. Which really? Was, was, which was just a house that the church bought across the street from the church. Oh, that's kind of cool. My church burned down. Um, and uh, it's let sad. Me get, let me guess. Presbyterian. Yep. <sighs> mm -hmm. Freaks. Yeah, I know. Luckily, it's not Methodists. I actually know nothing about the difference between the denominations, except Baptists, I know, tend to be a little little more... Uh, Fire and brimstone. Mm -hmm. And then Catholics are very... Uh, Polite and nice. <laughs> Catholics are very, like, by the book, like, very old school. Um, and then I feel like everything else, like Methodist, Presbyterian, it's it's just all, like, we're here. It's like uh, Methodists seem like the like like the boring guy in the office. Yeah, it's like it's like when you copy your friend's homework and you change it slightly. Yeah, you know, it's like that's that's what being a Methodist is like, or a Presbyterian, or a, I was Anglican, I think, okay. or Episcopal. Like I, I've said this before, but my church was one and then switched to the other. So I don't remember if we started as Anglican and switched to Episcopal. I think we started as Episcopal, switched to Anglican. Um, but do you remember what you were? Methodist. Okay, so here you are, blasting Methodists. You, you were the yourself? one who blasted the Methodists first. I just said, which is, I only said something that would be laughed at in a Methodist youth group. You're right. I'm sorry, dude. Methodist is like the businessman. Yeah, cause they'd go. <laughs> that that's like because we're so new and we're all I don't know. <laughs> we're Methodists. You and I. You know what we should do? We should we should make a a skit that the entire okay you lost me my focus is there any way we could squeeze like an ad in there <sighs> give me five minutes okay let me do my type five okay you can you you think you can hang on sure okay we should make a skid that is uh um, sorry you lost me again one more time not a sketch but a skit we should make a skit and get this it's uh it's it's full it's PG or actually it's G and it's uh so there's going to be at least some guidance necessary to watch it. It's Y7. It's TV Y7. What's the Y stand for? Young? Young 7. What did the Y stand <laughs> for in Y7? Y youth? It's for like youth. Youth 7. Young or youth, that's all I can really think. Sounds of. like a Scientology uh level. Maybe it's you know, from you all the yucks. The yucks? Yuck, yuck, yuck. You'll yuck seven times at least. Yeah. Uh, but I want to make a sket, a sket with you that is uh, fully, you know, it's it's appropriate and it's Christian. And the purpose is hopefully we can get it shown in youth groups across America. Well, we were, because uh, we were joking during the making of uh, the green screen skit of, for Jesus Club. Mm -hmm. um, we were joking of like, because... I remember in my youth group, I remember one time they showed a clip from the parkour scene in the office, or they showed like other office scenes, and it's like they correlated right. to the lesson. Always. So like they'd bring in other media, and sometimes they'd also show videos of like, it, it was, the videos were made by people who were like agnostic and not like mean about Christianity, but they were still poking fun at it, and then we would watch like a clip of that and be like ah, us Christians you know it would be like that so Matt were ho Matt and I were hoping that you know we we could potentially have Jesus Club be like hey, isn't this a funny little sketch but the the moment the idea came around of the Hyman, Hyman checks, inspection yeah that that that, that kind of flew out the window but the Hyman inspections got too many uh, chuckles out of out of myself and Matthew to let slot to to yeah. let get buried in in the creative wasteland that was a really fun it's good to produce because you know we. No, it was a funny what? Ad to yeah. produce because uh, a while ago you had the idea for like Jesus Club shirt and hat, and then uh, we just dropped the surfing sketch and we were like, 
we, we just got to stop being babies about our ideas and just, just fucking just make stuff. See if we can just make something quick. So we thought it would be funny to make like a Jesus Club skit that could like correlate with the uh, the hat and the shirt. Um, not an ad, but a, a skit to go along with it. Uh, we're 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 just we're just taking the piss. We're we're, we're that's I mean we we, we are we're we're very obvious. It's like of course there is like an ad component to it. So those who like quote unquote have called it out. While 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 I think our annoyance comes at the disregarding of the creativity that went behind it. It's whatever you can. At the end of the day, it it it, it is used to promote Jesus Club, which everyone should be a part of in general. But it was fun to make. We were just like brainstorming. We're here late at night, and it's like, all right, let's write and shoot a green screen sketch tonight. And we did. And uh, I just remember the Hyman inspection part. We (laughs) were fucking ROFLing, dude. We were raffling pretty hard. And And then you found that picture on Google of the detective with the magnifying glass and fucking because i had a lost vision of like shit. the exact picture i wanted for the hymen inspection it was just like a sherlock Holmes, like a guy in a sherlock holmes outfit with a big <laughs> magnifying glass and uh yeah one um, of you actually drove to carolina wings uh the next week uh the place at- of my childhood but and mine the, the one that i remember is was on san andrews road that's the one i i went to as a as a little boy they went to the other one that's and, fine uh, they look the same they look bland the person didn't look bland. Right? No, no, no. That's rude. The, the, the building. Where oh. It's the words and then a circular picture of a pig and a chicken on Carolina Wings and, and Rib, rib house. house. Yeah. Don't forget the Rib House. Is it slash Rib House or and, and Rib House? Ampersand, okay. I believe. Well, I only got their wings. That's Carolina Wings is where I was introduced to teriyaki chicken wings. Seriously? Yeah, that's where I got a love for teriyaki wings. And uh, I recently made the move away from Buffalo Wild Wings because... What? You know, I had we we had our we had our moments and we enjoyed it and we you know better call Saul back in the day. But you have to be honest, legitimately no hyperbole. Nine times out of ten, they get your order wrong and forget all the sauces. That's not hyperbole. It's it's literally like I can be so specific where <coughs> you and I are ordering Buffalo Wild Wings. They're not sending their best at Buffalo Wild. They're Wings. They're not. <laughs> Th- those are some bad hombres. <laughs> and uh, basically, I, I could add. Extra sauce, like mm-hmm. I'd, I'd be like cup, and then I would go on the menu. There's an option to add. But By you, the way, you pay for it. We're paying for the extra yeah, sauce. Yeah, and it's like one extra thing of sauce. Uh, I and I would even put extra. in the notes. I would put in the notes. Please make sure the extra sauce is in there. Mm-hmm. Show up, no extra sauce. And that was not like a once or twice thing, because you know mistakes happen in the in the food service world. I but get it. It, it but got to the point where I wasn't getting a correct order at all. Yeah, and, and, this and is we from would predict multiple, it. multiple Buffalo Wild Wings, and also like when you when you're in when you're in it, it's the, it's wings, it's 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 great, it's great atmosphere. You're with your buds, sports outside looking in, love sports mm-hmm. outside looking in. Now, what is it? It's a dis, it's you. It's typically a gross, mismanaged establishment. Wait until we take one over. That's what I think. I think we need to do. Uh, we need to pull uh, one of those, you know, like the guy did for gay Chick Fil A. We need to do that, except for like, maybe like white buffalo wild wings. Just as like, no, we like, we don't have to just. Well, you lost me. Ju- just as like a marketing thing, it's like what, like white, like uh, like white history. Like we put all a bunch of like classic white history on, on the walls. Okay, uh, let's go to ads. And uh, we'll be right back. If anything, white people from from their past deserve to eat at Buffalo Wild Wings for like their like for uh what's the what's the it's like in between hell and the living. Purgatory. It's like their purgatory. Buffalo Wild Wings feels like a purgatory when you're inside of it. It does because you're, it's not the worst place in the world. It's on hell. You're like waiting forever for like the lowest quality wings. It's never fast, and all it is is like they're not breading and frying them there. They are frozen, pre-fried, like <laughs> and they just nuggets that they just it's heat like up. They just take a sauce and they just go. <laughs> they like just sometimes you can see the globs of sauce so- like. They didn't. 
They didn't toss it. Yeah, they didn't you know? toss it at all. They, it's not well mixed onto the chicken. It's just like <laughs> and smeared on the wing a little bit. Like I, I, another thing is like I would always order the boneless wings, which would just be like frozen chicken nuggets, essentially that they heat up yeah. and then like Tyson nuggets exactly but I wanted you know I like a lot of sauce hence why I would always ask for the extra sauce yeah, yeah, they would forget the extra sauce and then the, there would actually be whole wings that only had like a dot of sauce on it and I'm like this is just a fucking plain chicken nugget now and you know what Buffalo Wild Wings is not the worst tasting in the world I enjoy like yeah, if it's someone good, were to it's say, good it's good. Buffalo Wild Wings on me, I'll join and I won't complain. I'll have a good time probably. <sighs> I'm just but sad. if it's on my dime, mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna complain. And it's expensive too. Like it's not it's not cheap. You know, if it was super cheap, I could you know let it slide a little more. It's like you know, the service sucks, the food sucks, but you know I'm getting what I'm paying for. But but what is it that every location has the same fucking problem? Where like I remember where. When we first moved out here, for some reason, we had a Buffalo Wild Wings kick. But Oh, yeah, we did. If you remember, just there would be times we'd get seated at a table, and the place would be essentially empty except for, like, I'm being realistic, like 10 other seated people but scattered around, like, bar. Half of them being at the booths. bar. Yeah, half of them being at the bar. So it would take 20 minutes for us to even get a drink order. Mm -hmm. Like, for people to, I don't know, to... To do a to do the serving part of the job. Well, my favorite was the classic. Happened many times. Finally, someone comes, takes the drink order, walks away. Five minutes go by, and someone else comes up and takes a drink order. And it's like uh, we already they already got the drinks. It's like oh okay. Yep. Then nothing happens, and then uh, finally I get my overpriced sprite. And uh, look, guys, we we usually don't like to talk about drama and get into it, but. Buffalo Wild Wings, you can see, pushed us a little too far. I'll be silent no more. Buffalo Wild Get, Wings getting our orders wrong time and time again, not including the sauces, not being timely. And I'm I'm not we're not trying to sound like Karen's. We're legitimately waiting twenty minutes for a drink order in a in a, an essentially empty establishment. Hello. Yeah. You know? I just want some water. I just want a little bit of water. I'm thirsty. Uh, can an ombre get some water, please? Yeah. You know? It's it's Fucking ridiculous. However, the sports environment, when I look at that TV screen on the wall and I see football or basketball or baseball, I feel fantastic. Thank and God I, they don't put fucking volleyball on there or <sighs> softball. If they put volleyball, I'd be rocking an erection the whole time in Buffalo Wild Wings. And yeah. That's no good. No. You know? Our friend, uh, former friend Johnson, was uh, banned from all Buffalo Wild Wings establishments for that very reason. Mm -hmm. um, but that's when they were showing basketball. So, yeah. I'm not going to get into his business, you know. We playing basketball. We playing basketball. What's that from? Sounds very familiar. I've heard you sing it before. Probably like Mike. Maybe. Probably maybe, like Mike. Maybe it's from a scene in like Mike or something. Was it just in your head? Either that or just some like, it's from some mid 2000s, early 2000s thing. So you didn't come up with it? No. Are you? Is there any part of your brain that's like maybe you did come up with I that I, and you I don't know what it's from? Didn't come up with it. Is a song. We playing basketball. Let me see. I challenge our lovely viewers to uh, find where that's from, because I believe you came up with it, Ryan, and you're just selling yourself short. You're not giving yourself any credit. What does that say? Yeah. Can we get some little Romeo on the track? It's a little bow wow, baby. Little bow wow. Sorry. What about little Romeo? It's all right. He had the Romeo show. He did. The Little Romeo show was... <laughs> I always turned it off when it came on. Rap music? No, thank you. You couldn't correlate. Huh? You couldn't co you correlate and feel connected to him. You, yeah. didn't, you, didn't, uh, you didn't get it. At the time, I just didn't get it. You know, I wasn't hip with it. It's a, it's a deep show. There's many layers. I just remember the theme... It's kind of like Lost. You know, at some point, you get confused, and you're not sure kind of what story they're trying to tell, especially when they do the... The time jump in in the little Romeo third season, right, right, and, and then and then they do kind of like the the what if this happened timeline, similar to Lost. I think they were like uh, kind of inspired by it. it oh well, they, like. they had a lot of the same uh, writers as Lost, and okay. the little Romeo show actually. I think, as someone who has watched both complete series multiple times, I think the little Romeo show actually had, uh, I think, a deeper 
lore and plot behind it than Lost. Because Lost could better be pretty lazy. themes with the narrative, definitely. Totally, yeah. Um, and also the religious undertones in Lost are kind of overtones where it's like they throw it in your face. We're a little Romeo. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of like Islamic undertones that I think that they kind of, uh, they peppered in there very well, where mm-hmm. it's not like straight up in your face, like how Lost does it. Oh, yeah. Um, both great shows, though. Okay. I highly recommend both of them. Um, and I wonder what Little Romeo is up to these days. That's someone we could get on the podcast. Let, let, let's see what, I wonder what Little Romeo is up to today. Let me, let me check it out. I bet we could get Small Romeo on the podcast. You know we could, you know? Uh, Romeo Miller is American rapper and actor. Let's let's check uh, Spotify. Ooh, is he still dropping? Is he Big Romeo now? Let me see. Romeo Miller. What up? It's Big Romeo. Yeah, Romeo Miller, artist. The last thing was 2019 called okay. Hidden Treasure. Half a decade, but and then, you know, it could still be on the wagon. You know, why do these artists you know it's sad? Why do they feel like they have to have auto tune? <sighs> Got a lot of crooks try to steal your heart. Never really had luck. You can never figure out how to love. How to love. You got a lot of moments that didn't last forever. Now you're in the corner trying to put it together. How to love. That is a great Wayne song. Actually, that is a really good... Dude, I love Lil Wayne. Not the stare. <laughs> yeah. I love the way Lil Wayne raps. It's like... <laughs> that's, his great, that's his greatest song. That and Six Foot, Seven Foot. Eight? Foot Bunch. Yep. Crunch. I do like Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne quite a bit. Yeah. I used to actually really not like Lil Wayne. Uh, and then I learned what a genius he was. He's actually very smart. Lil Wayne turned out to be Big Wayne in your head. Yeah, you could say that. He's a big brain Wayne is what they call him for two reasons. Little Wayne, uh, he wrote in a diary from jail every day, which... He had diarrhea in jail every day? Yeah. Because he was so nervous about six foot, seven foot and how good it would do? Mm Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm behind bars. I can't, you know, be out there to promote the song. bars. Okay. Like rap bars. Creating bars. Okay. Well, he wrote in his diary every day. Uh, (laughs) But Drake, you know, Drake slept with... His uh, his girl, and what? Drake Drake told him that. And uh, why Lil, would Drake tell him this? I think he told him that as a like to try to be like, hey man, I just really respect you, and I'm gonna let you know. And uh, it it really tore it tore Wayne up, and Wayne wrote about it in his diary. And I'm probably getting some details wrong, but I just Drake I, had sex with my girl ex girlfriend. He did. I I read the diary page where he's like, it was just really uh. It's, I can't stop thinking about it. Did he upload it. the diary page to his Instagram? I think what he happened? sold it as a book. Oh, interesting. Uh, the Diary of Little Wayne. Um, yeah. And uh, Drake actually has a tattoo of Wayne on him. Fun fact. Does he? Mm-hmm. Where? I think on his arm. Just a just a tattoo of Lil Wayne? I think I think he did it to apologize to I'm Wayne. Sorry I had sex with mm-hmm. your ex-girlfriend. With your, with your girl. I got your face tattooed. I'm, I'm sure that made everything better. It did. It actually it healed everything. It yeah. healed all... But, you know, there's people that have wronged me that if they just came back into my life with a tattoo of me on their arm, I'm, it's all good. That's why you have the Pete Buttigieg uh, tattoo. He didn't right? accept the apology, but yeah. yeah. Um, and hopefully he'll come around. He's a very sweet guy. Um, I know, and I wronged him, and I feel bad about it. He posts a lot of how happy he is married and all that. And I think that honestly that's I think just... he's just trying to rub it in your face. Yeah. I think deep down he's... He's actually miserable. 100%. And he's just doing it to get to you. The tattoo is not one I'm going to get rid of, though. And I hope, that Pete, if you're listening, Mayor Pete, I hope that you will come around in time because I am sorry and I miss you. Um, and <laughs> just leave it there. Leave it at that. Did you see that clip of uh, Mayor Pete? He was being asked. It's like, why, why did uh, Elon Musk lie and say that you were, like, blocking aid? And then he's like, well, it was just a miscommunication. It turns out that... But, she, but, did you? What? No, no, no. I was just doing an impression of Mayor oh, Pete. Oh, okay, okay. But what did, okay. What did he say? Impression. It was just like... It was just like... Um, it all was like easily handled over a phone call. It was like about getting Starlink uh, hooked up. But like Elon Musk framed it to where it's like, the Democrats are not letting people get... Uh, get and are, are intentionally not letting people get aid. I just read that fun little headline before this where it's like 
Kamala Harris is making people die in the hurricane relief effort purposely because those are swing vote states and she wants those people to die so they can't vote. Well, that's proven. Uh, (laughs) And also, just so you know, the Democrats have been steering hurricanes towards uh, red districts of, like, Florida is, is, you know, like, just getting smacked left and right. North Carolina, Georgia, it's... uh, it's in an effort to keep these people from going out and voting. But um, I think the moral of the story being that Elon Musk just likes to cause a lot of, just likes to say bullshit and things that, I think he got his feelings hurt. It's like, they're not letting Starlink in. What's wrong with my Starlink? And then he has to create a big fuss about it. You know, like, um, let's say a YouTuber has a problem with like Best Buy or right. like American Airlines. Sure. I, th- I, I feel like it's like kind of like in the same way, except in this case it was... Oh, when they blast them on like Twitter or something, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I I I do think that uh, I don't know. I can't really say too much bad about Elon after he saved those Thai kids from that cave. Well, this is going to be awkward because what? there's an elephant in the room we have to talk about. And uh, what you all know on the podcast, Matt and I are big Elon Musk heads. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's the modern day Tony Stark. You know, if there wasn't an, uh, an Iron Man, he'd He's as close to cool as Iron Man is. He's um, he recently uh, went out at a at a Trump rally and embarrassed himself. He did he did an embarrassing jump up and down. He did remember the toddler jump he did. Oh oh, the one where it's like he's a, like a toddler that wants to be picked up. Yeah yeah he did he, he did uppies. he did the toddler jump again and uh, he brought he. You know the the red hats make America great again. Yeah. He, well, he made uh, a black version. Uh, he called it dark MAGA. Um, and you know, I, 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 he's as I said as I said before this. He's the modern day Tony Stark. He's yeah. the he's the richest and smartest man there ever once was. And Damn it, uh, dude, because because you makes and it hard I, to defend him when he does yeah, stuff like this. I was gonna this. say you and I like to emulate him and his style, and now that's gonna be. At Thanksgiving this year, when I walk in in my black MAGA hat and my black Occupy Mars t-shirt, and I do the jump. It's well, people say that the jump is cool, and you know, there's people on the right that are trying to, you know, oh, the jump, it's, the jump's not that awkward. Look how cool, he's just having fun. Have he you did ever it to troll it before? Yeah, he the did left. It, he did it to troll because they made fun of him before, and... You know, I I I tried to do the same thing. I didn't make a point of it. I I was at a this not the wedding I'm going to, but I was at another family wedding okay. in the past. And um, as soon as that dance came out, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna if this is in, I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna try to help Elon out to make this more of a thing. And legitimize it not be as cringe. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to legitimize the jump up, and I uh, I I put I put a glass up and said I had a speech, and then I uh, started doing the jump. Um, when I got to the point in the speech when I was talking about how, how joyful I was that they got married and everyone was just kind of, uh, everyone just went silent and there was like a, <laughs> like a, that echoed and then like a, uh, like a little murmuring kind of half laugh. Um, did you wear your Occupy Mars t-shirt? No. And that might've been the problem cause they probably didn't get who I was emulating. Otherwise they would have been like, Oh my God, it's, it's Musk. Yeah, it's Musk. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, as as much as we try to make it look cool, it's just not working. And like, we just we just hope that I just I just hope that by the grace of God, he um he becomes more confident in himself because I think that all of this is just due to his kind of very right obvious um, lack of confidence. Because you could his, tell when he says something, he's looking for the audience approval. Yeah. Like, and before he says. Like before he said the dark MAGA thing, like you could tell that, you know, he thought of that like the week before and he uh, just thought about it nonstop and was like, I'm going to, I'm going to start my speech with, with this joke. And he, he got a custom black MAGA hat, his black Occupy Mars shirt. And the whole time leading up to him walking on stage, his heart was pounding, not for the speech he was giving, but just for that opening line. And, uh, see, I think you're giving him a little too much credit. I think at first it started out as him getting embarrassed by wearing the bright red, even though he is pro Trump. I think that for some reason, like in photo, like it makes him uncomfortable because he, because he knows when he's at a Trump rally, like wearing that or like saying the stuff on Twitter, he's going to have people agree with him. But going out in public and dealing with real people wearing a MAGA hat makes him a little scared because he's like, you know, he doesn't like confrontation. He's, he's, he's worried 
um, about about how he looks. Um, so I think you're wrong. Oh, okay. He radiates confidence to me. Uh, very, very powerful Spe- confidence, especially when he when he when he jumps up and down like a toddler and, and go, then go fuck yourself. And then <laughs> I I I so, uh, I've seen many people make the point, but it still stands. I do think it is. It is funny of uh, the constant chatter of uh, celeb culture and the left is programming people and like uh, they have the left has all these elites that are buying them out, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you have the richest man in the world at, <laughs> at a political rally for uh, one political party of the two, you know, in a two, <laughs> in a, in a two party system. Uh, it's just it's just funny. I just find it interessante. Interessante. As, as the French say. Muy interessante. You know, um, I wonder if Elon Musk ever uh, has heard of Super Mega. You think so? I think he's, maybe. He's dude. maybe given uh, us a watch. He could be watching right now, and then we could get a fucking tweet blasted our way. And, you know, you don't want those, uh, those X heads coming at us because... Like I, after he did the jump, I saw a, a photograph of him midair with Troy on his face and Donald Trump looking back at him. And actually, it looks like he was a little scared, like he accidentally jumped a little too high and was worried about yes. landing, or maybe in a cool fashion. going too high and maybe escaping the Earth's gravity and just just keeps going. I like how you can read him when he's doing these things. Like he'll do the thing and then go, whatever it is, and then he'll he'll do like the self assured like. Okay, that was good. And he'll look around, and you could kind of see him like pausing, reading, and being like, "Another one, another one." <laughs> and then he does it again. Or, or the other thought could be like, he goes, "Was that uncool?" No, I'm Elon Musk. No, I'll do it again because people think that I probably am awkward. But no, I meant to do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I meant to do that. XQC. <laughs> uh, both are people who have met with Donald Trump. <clears throat> you okay? Yeah. But uh, I saw someone tweet that picture out, and they said this photo will be one for the history books and like full seriousness. It'll be on history book covers. Hopefully <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not letting my kid go to a school unless that's on the front cover. No more uh, statue then, of Liberty or Pearl Harbor or great well, depression. Maybe photos. the one where Trump's going fight, fight. You know, I thought it was, I mean, when you look at it, um, uh, d- um, uh, one president can barely, uh, walk up some steps and the other one gets shot in the fucking head and then fist bumps. Pretty epic. <laughs> I wish he did that laugh like as a as like a self confidence like Woo! he does in my like when I read it he does oh yeah like yeah, I was yeah, showing yeah. you uh him twirling the t-shirt around like looking at other people twirling the t-shirts around at like a sports event he's like oh, 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 they're looking at me oh, oh. like th- th- that that is his brain he is at the end of the day socially because of who he is he is just a socially like inept middle schooler, like he's just like a rich kid in middle school. He's seeking the approval of others and then flaunting the wealth of like his parent or like just flaunt, uh, like in this case his business and other people's faces as a means to solidify as like see aren't I cool because money, dude? Because say what you want he's gonna put us because on mars bla- black ma- uh, dark maga not black that's maga group. that's a different group yeah uh but elon you know he said we're gonna have humans on mars by 2024 uh 2026 that's not happening i promise in the next decade and you know what if if we do put humans on mars by 2030 i'll eat my words i will print them i'll print the transcript of of this everything i'm saying right now out and i hate my answer to this my answer is who fucking cares who fucking cares i care dude (laughs) like i don't i don't i really don't care that's not like i don't know out of like the technology he's putting out he there are stuff that like starlink is being used for that's great and that's good and that is like beneficial but like, yeah, but he's not the one like building and crafting no. Starlink. It's teams no. of very smart engineers yes, yes. pioneering all this, and he just puts his <laughs> face and name on it. But uh, yeah, I don't um, I don't know. It's he's just, not going to be the one to lead humans to Mars. No, one hundred percent. No, no, I promise he's not. He gonna led be the, humans to X. <sighs> I know, and look what happened. He was shot and killed. You know, uh, humans. I think will 
Step foot on Mars in our lifetime. Who was shot and killed? X. X X X Tintasian. Got it. P- pretty poor taste. I was yeah. I'm sorry. I uh, I had to go back just to make sure. Yeah. I'm sorry. X. And or, I doubt that you would be making that joke if uh, Billy Eilish truly did give you those glasses. Because they were good friends. I know they were close. Well, Asshole. The, the media doesn't. And hopefully, she sees me defending him in this clip. And oh, goes, I see what you're doing, dude. And, and Second, goes, the cameras are off. You're going to drop this little bullshit. Maybe I need to give him the red glasses because I I'm the red era. Matt's the green era. I'm the red era. Check this out. We, we have fights about which era of Billy Eilish is better. I'm Dark Billy. Uh, red Billy, Blue Billy, Green Billy, <laughs> Blonde Billy, Blonde Billy slaps. I'll tell you something. You could be the first man on Mars if you wanted, Ryan. If you dropped all of this uh, super mega bullshit right now, yeah, and started if training. Uh, if your mom changes her name legally to Mars, <laughs> come on, man. I told you with the the mom shit, it's got to stop. Okay, it's just one little goof. No, it's not one little goof, dude. You do it all the time, and I've already told you how or I feel about, about it, and I've told you how she feels. Big Stop. Goof. No, dude, okay, now you, you've done it again. <laughs> I told you how she feels and how I feel by extension. So stop. Knock it the fuck off, man. Sorry, just like the comedy in the meanness and rudeness of like calling someone fat. Calling my, like, <laughs> like also someone that can't defend themselves because yeah. my mom doesn't have a platform to like. Maybe she should have worked harder. <laughs> she should have quit teaching elementary school and started building a social media presence. What else? I mean, that's Matthew all I can really Toys say. Reviews. That could have been you. You could have been Ryan Toys Reviews. Yeah, she could have started whoring me out on YouTube when I was a young boy. Not whoring me out in a sexual way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm surprised she didn't, you know. I know she loves fame and power and money. Because you, Matthew, you as a young kid, it's almost like you were made for Nickelodeon or Disney Channel. I can picture it now with the hair, with like the bowl cut. Your, your your want to like act and like mm-hmm. your 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 charisma and your talent at that age. Thank you. You could have been. I bet you if uh, if if the stars aligned, you could have been Freddie and iCarly. If I had an agent, you know, that mm-hmm. could have uh, repped me. See, that's probably Nick Lowe. Jealous as a kid of like just other kids on shows being oh, like, yeah, I I could do this, and then I'd be. Pu- it would be fun. I get to, I could do this. Oh. I was jealous because I was like, "How did they get this? They must have rich parents." And they they typically do. Almost always, yeah. yeah they had rich parents or connections already in Hollywood, uh, or the parents, uh, even if they're not rich, it, they were the parents that took them out of school to move them to Los Angeles because the parent was so obsessed with them being a star. Yeah. Uh, which is that's probably what I'll do. You know. I'll have a kid, and then I will be desperate for the heydays, the the great, well, the golden age of super mega. They, they've, they've, in, they, there's a lot of laws in, in place now to protect children in the entertainment nope, industry. Nope, not YouTube though. Yeah, wink, wink. <laughs> With movies and TV, there. Hey, is, Hollywood's but... a changed place. There's a lot of things in place now to protect the kids. There are no laws for YouTube. Nope. I can, I can have my child uh, pumping out as much content as I please. And I don't have to give them a damn penny because it is not a movie or television show. So <laughs> I, I do want to have some kids, though, so they can become vlogs. Yeah. And uh, vloggers. Um, I'm going to poop. And while I am taking this poop, Matt, tell them why there's names on screen. OK. Uh, well, Ryan, we'll see you next episode. <gasps> the name. Did you toot? No, I didn't. Uh, you didn't leave me with a parting gift? I just you left me with a parting gift because now you're shutting the door. Okay. Um, couldn't have waited until you were out. Okay. Uh, the names on screen right now that are scrolling, you might be going, holy F. What, 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 what? What are all these names? These are the names of all of daddy's little children. Okay. These are the names of all uh, the potential boys, girls, and everything in between that uh, I could birth one day that could become uh, vloggers. Um, and all of these names are ones that Ryan and I sat down and uh, thought up, we were like, what are some good names that I could name, uh, you know, potential children to create vlogs to make money and put in my bank account? So here's all those names. Um, the names in the top box are the ones that uh, are a little bit cooler. Um, 
And if you want to be one of those names, you can go to patreon.com slash supermega or click in the description and uh, you could sign up for our Patreon and become an executive producer or just a regular producer. Uh, you also get stickers each month with those and get your name in every new episode. Or you could just do the $5 tier, which gets you all the content. Uh, it's, it's, it's all fun. It's super, it's super duper fun. Uh, and you also can get more of this episode. You can get Super Mini Show, which is a little uh, extra scoop every week of uh, this week's episode. So we love you. You guys are amazing. You guys are the sweetest, most caring, loving, beautiful people in the world. Uh, Ryan and I would be nothing without you. And um, I think uh, I don't know how to end it. So. Uh, Maybe to bring it full circle, uh, Luke, why don't you go ahead and uh, and play us out? And now to end the podcast, Matt is going to come on and sing an original song. Matt, get over here. Come on, dude. No, Matt, get, get out from behind the camera. Take the headphones off. You're turning it, turning it back around on me. I don't have bandages on my face, and I have these big bruises on my face I'll, I'll blur them. from where Ryan hits me. Um, original song? Yeah. Can it be a cover? Uh, yeah, no, no cover. Okay, original song. <clears throat> Super Mega Show. It's the show with Matt and Ryan. The two best friends in the whole world, and they have a podcast together. Oh, Super Mega Show. Oh, super mega show. These goofy guys, Matt and Ryan, they are the funniest best friends on the interwebs. With the best fans in the world. Thanks. Thank you. Matt, also, uh, sorry, not Matt. Ryan, also, if you see this, Matt accidentally called me his best friend the other day. Hey,